Hi, I'm Mike Bankhead, your host. I'm a bass player and songwriter from Dayton, Ohio. Today, my guest is Brandon Berry. You might recognize Brandon Berry if you are from Dayton as the voice and songwriter of local band The Paint Splats. Well, now he lives in San Diego. And while he's been living in San Diego, uh, some of us here in Dayton have been keeping him busy. And you see, Brandon directed music videos for seven of the eight remixes, seven of the eight versions of Hold the Wick. And the first of those will be out on Tuesday, March 15th. This conversation is mostly unedited, so you're about to get a pretty in-depth, live, up-close look at what being in the room with us is like when we talk. Um, here it goes. All right, now it's on. Okay. We were just being funny, and now we're no longer being funny. See, that's, this is why you have to turn it on before. Well, this lets me check the levels. Keep talking, Brandon. I don't uh, see you in the waveform. See, see, this is the thing you got to do, Mike. When you get to a point where you get like 15 podcasts under your belt or something, you're going to get to a point where you just hit record, and then you won't even have to talk about all this technical stuff, and then you'll just do it on the fly. Like, you're not even touching anything right now. You're just putting your hands down by your crotch. You're not doing anything. <laughs> They're not really by my crotch. They're like, you know, 10 inches from my crotch. I'm folding but one. the point is they're idle. They should be moving some knobs. I don't know how to use any of these knobs. <laughs> okay. That, that's going to make for an interesting introduction. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so you're Brandon Berry. I'm Brandon Berry, yeah. Drinking some coffee. Drinking some coffee. You know, yeah. uh... So we we talked about this already, but that's actually well. We how didn't we... talk about it on this recording yet, though. No, but that's actually how we met. It is, and so one could say that we've come full circle. Do you want to explain this to the listeners? Is this, or should I? Does explain that it? mean that's the ending? Because that's that means that it's the end of the story when it comes all the way like that. No, I know, I'm I mean, not done yet. I don't think that our story as people is over. I'm just saying that it is this the end of our friendship. Then? I hope not. Um, so you want to tell the story, or should I tell the story? Well, what, what's the story? I don't understand. Uh, we actually probably, how we met, we probably see it from different perspectives. Well, we certainly see it from different well, let me, perspectives. Let me hear your perspective first. Because you didn't email me. I emailed whatever email was on your podcast page. Do you think I read emails? Come on. Well, I mean, I know better. <laughs> he who shall not be named was probably reading those emails, right? Well, well uh, I was just saying, you email me about seven times a day. <laughs> it's not seven. It's more like... It's not even daily, and I don't email you near as much as John DeBuck calls you, so <laughs> he didn't well, know that was true. coming. But that's true, that's true. <laughs> uh, so I had just put out my first record, my first full-length album, and as an indie musician who no one listens to, I obviously <laughs> was looking to get more listeners, and I had heard you do a podcast. And the reason I found your podcast is because you had Terry Izzy Rock Martin from the Gem City podcast, you talked to him. Yep, that's right. And I, I don't remember if you went on his podcast or he went on yours. He went on ours, actually. Right. He but, came to our garage. But he talked about garage. it. He ta I mean, he promoted it. And since at the time I was, uh, I used to listen to all of his music episodes on the Gym City podcast. And I was, and then I went to your podcast page and I thought, they, they don't have a lot of episodes and they haven't talked to any musicians yet. Let me get on this train before they decide not to do any more podcasts yeah. So I reached out to whatever email address was on the page and explained that I'm an independent musician and I just put out a record and please somebody talk to me about it. Well, here here's the thing, Mike. I mean, you you were the first Dayton musician that we ever really knew about. Um and you reached out to us and because of of Terry and you uh you're the reason why I know any of these Dayton musicians. And I have had a lot of opportunities to make some cool stuff because of that. And, yeah. That makes me feel just a little bit useful. Like, I'm not often useful, but I feel like I've done some good in the world, maybe. Yeah, and it's, it's, it, it kind of came around, like, we, we made that record together. And, you know, what was it, even three, four years after I, we met? 
Uh, two like that. years, but close enough. Two years, really. Well, we really? met in 2017, right? I don't know. I feel like we met. You're better well, with dates. The record that. came out in 2017, and I feel like it was already out when we met. It was mm-hmm. summertime when I came to your house and did the podcast. So I think it was shortly after it was released. No, no, no. We 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 did the podcast, and then we went to your release show. Yeah, the release show was six months after the actual release. Really? I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. That. Like I yeah, I didn't manage to put it together in time for the real release. So the the record actually came out in July and the celebration show was in December. By the way, there's the on my wall, there's a poster for the celebration show. Oh look at that. Yeah. that this Me is and Shrug and the new old fashioned. That that's a good time. I don't I don't understand. A, that purple one over there? No, the no, purple one in the middle. The one over there, that's Tino. See, I don't know, Mike. I've never seen that actu- actual poster before. I hung that up all over town. There was a yellow cab. It was a, hey, I hung it up. I didn't go anywhere. That's yellow true. Yellow cab was uh, an adventure going down there, and we, we lived half a mile away. We didn't go anywhere. We, we, did, we stayed in the basement and talked to people on a microphone, and until you came along, they, were, they weren't musicians. I don't know who they were. So... I guess what I'm learning is there could be a lot of people who would listen to our music, but they stay in their basement all the time, even though they live half a mile from the venue. I'm just saying we weren't from Dayton and we didn't know it. We weren't uh, going out anywhere. We, we didn't experience anything. I honestly don't know what I was doing um, until you came along. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds almost too perfect. <laughs> Yeah, when Brandon met Mikey. Well, you're gonna you're a movie maker. You should probably that, that, there could be a story. Is in this there how you is this how you're gonna segue already? No, no, no. We're not gonna segue yet. Oh, okay. Well, because I was it was a little too smooth. It was okay. Do you think I'm learning the podcast game a little too fast? No, you're not learning too fast. I mean, you're learning the the right amount of time here. I it's it's to the point where everyone deserves a podcast and. The world needs a, a Mike Bankhead podcast. You think? Do you remember <laughs> when I discussed doing a podcast with you regularly? I, I said that I think that we, we would did, be a good we, co-host we, team. Yeah, we talked about it. It didn't happen. Well, this is the first episode right here. No, this is my podcast. It's not our... I mean, I guess we oh, could turn this into our podcast. You left me in the dirt. Here I am. This is going to be... What am, I, you, what am I, your 15th guest on this at this point? You might be about 10th, actually. Wow, um, I feel so special. You asked me so late. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We're having this conversation in December of 2021, and this episode is not going to get posted probably till March of 2022. In the actual first episode of this podcast, I'm going to say it in past tense because it will be past tense, it went up on January 5th. So even though you're like the 10th-ish person, I still don't even have a single episode out yet. So you're pretty early. I'm pretty early. And January 5th is my birthday. That's a, a fact that no one needed to know. No, no one needed to know. No. But I'll leave that in. That's a favor to you. I'm not going to edit that out. Okay. All right. Um, let me ask you a question. Um, why the podcast? Why this? Why is this the next thing? I think it's hilarious that you're asking me a question that you already know the answer to because you listened to my trailer that came out today. Like my, I don't retain information. That's Mike. true. So for the people listening today, it's December 22nd, 2021. And the introductory five minute, hey, I have a new podcast episode just went up today, went live today. And Brandon listened to it today and he forgot all five minutes of it. So I, I will explain what I explained on that. A very, uh, an artist, uh, I'm going to have to edit that. Uh. No, you don't. Leave oh, the uh. It makes you human. There's an uh in human. Don't you know that? I mean, there's a backwards uh in human. There's an um in human. Backwards, forwards, it's still an uh. <laughs> okay. A so- musician consultant who I follow on Twitter and whose advice that I have, I've, I've conversed with this gentleman and his, his advice I've taken. And he has a very tasteful name. Um, he's tastefully named. Is That's he, his name? No, his name is Michael, which is very tasteful. Oh, right, right. Um. There, to see, there is the um again. He said, hey, musicians, if you're going to do a song and have remixes, you should have all of the people who did a remix interview them on the podcast and talk about the creation and their process. Hashtag content, because today, you know, 
we were talking about this on the way here. You can't make art and then sell it, and never, you know people say you need to have content and and I I thought that was a good idea, and I just and because I have a single that is coming out on March fifteenth, and there are remixes for it, and I thought let me do that, and then I thought well if I'm only going to market myself, that's why would anyone listen to the podcast if the only thing I'm going to do is market myself? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Well, well I I don't disagree that you sh- you know should be doing this because I I like um listening to local musicians and and stuff talk about things other than their music. And I will be. That's the point. Like it's the idea started off as a means for me to market myself and then it grew because as an actual human, I have other interests than just music, and there are people who share some of those interests. And I just want to have interesting conversations and record them, mm-hmm. and hopefully people will be interested in hearing it. So, Well, and my, my point is what I was saying. Um, you should probably face the microphone when you're talking. I was looking tastefully to the left. You were. As I was thinking of what I was going to say next. Oh, he's taking a picture now. Isn't that cute? Hashtag cute. content. Hashtag content. Um, the point I was making, Izzy, Terry Martin. Yes. You know, you and, and him in tangent, you know, not in tandem, were the reason I, I discovered a lot of this music and, you know, talking to him and then listening to the Gem City podcast was also a big influence on me and um, going down these rabbit holes because it, it's, it's now my job as a, um, an internally thinking person mostly to go down these rabbit holes and discover new things. And he was a, a conduit. Is that a good word for that? You're the English major. I don't know. So to have another node out there generating this electricity in my brain and other people's brains, I think is a very good thing. Um, so I, I think you're going to be doing the good work. I have not heard the episodes yet. Oh, you will. I know I will, but I'm saying... Unless you decide not to Because I'm number listen. 10 here. You know, this might be the big finale. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> it hasn't even started yet. Um, but my point is, don't cut out that... Um, let people know who I am. I am not a streamlined thinker. You are not. In fact, there are many things one could call you, and that would not be remotely close to one of them. Someone asked me the other day, and it was myself, would I make mainstream lyrics if I knew people would listen to them? And I don't... First of all, are you saying your lyrics are not mainstream? Do you think they're mainstream? No, that was a joke. Okay. <laughs> and I, here's the thing. I don't... It's, hold up, hold up, hold up. I haven't really properly introduced you, so people who are listening are like, who is this person, and why is he talking about lyrics? So let's... They can read, Mike. If they read like you, they'll have no idea. <laughs> so Brandon Berry is a songwriter and guitar player and musician and multi-talented person and his project is called The Paint Splats and that will be in the show notes for you to click on. All right, now please continue. You interrupted me. I am sorry. See, one of the things I have to learn as a host is not to do that. I don't think I would change, I, I can't change the way I write, right? You told me about this website where you can possibly get your movies and television and film. And I'm discovering that the reason I'm getting these rejections is not because of the production value of the songs. Content's not universal enough? It's not universal. But I can't write about those things that I don't know about, really. And, like, I, I can't... I'm not saying I dumb them down to, because John DeBuck, he, he has a very good, John DeBuck is guilty pleasures, obviously. He has a very good way of, of making his lyrics odd enough and uh, quirky, 
but not to the point where it would turn someone off. They are, they're very universal. I think the word you're looking for is accessible. Accessible. In my own roundabout way, I was telling you the definition of accessible. My point is I don't have the ability to do what he does, and I don't have the ability to dumb it down to the point where it's so smooth and without... I just, I don't care to make music like that. Well, that's like when fine. you were talking with Vance Joy last night. Yeah. You were talking about the falsetto voice with the ukulele and the, the four chords. It just seemed really affected, and there's so many songs that sound exactly the same. And now I listen, get it's popular. It's very commercially successful. I've it seen is. that in so many commercials and movies, the four point, you know, 465 million views on YouTube. Yeah. Look, my biggest v- video on YouTube has got 600 views. But that's fine. The question is, are you making the art that you want to make? I am. And that's what's important. But the point is, am I doing it because for the sake of me doing it, because I like it, or am I doing it because I want other people to hear it? And at some point, there's uh, a monetary... Uh, benefit to making commercially successful music. Yes. But does that make the commercially successful people who sought out to make music like how I'm making, and, but, but somehow it catch on, does that make them any less of an artist? I think the answer is it depends. Probably not. Right? Intention has to matter there and motive has to matter there. Did Vance Joy go out of his way to make a song so streamlined and uh, commercial? Or did he make that song because he liked doing it? The only person that can answer that question is Vance Joy. Is that even a person? Is that his name? That's a ridiculous name. The what, the Joy or the Vance? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's... A, uh, I feel like we started off talking about one thing and then went in a completely different direction, which is what happens to our conversations. I'll tell you why. I don't drink coffee anymore. Says the person really? who literally just finished a cup of coffee. <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna say something. Sorry. I don't drink as much coffee anymore. My uh my heart can't take it, I don't think. And maybe that's something I made up. But my, uh, I, don't, I don't consume much of anything anymore. When I first met you, I was drinking probably a pot of coffee a day. Well, and your st- podcast was called Coffee with Idiot. You know, I was just thinking, what, it should have been called a podcast. That would have been funny. The podcast. Did I, did I do a spoonerism? Maybe. Is it a spoonerism? Or is, it, uh, or is that a sniglet? You're the English major. I, I said something I not wasn't supposed to say. Not necessarily. The news I? is not. You don't have to know English to know that show. I, uh, I said something I wasn't supposed to say. Right? What? I don't know. I'm, I'm old now. I don't. I'm cognitively de- deficient. Listen, I don't know what we. It doesn't matter. It's Your podcast was called Coffee with Idiots. It's called Coffee with Idiots. Yeah. I, I, uh, I no longer do that show. You don't. And also, no longer drink coffee. For I do drink coffee a little bit. I do maybe a cup or two a day. But, it, you know, I'm, I'm going to turn 27 here in a few weeks. You know, if you, were, if you were a rock star, uh, you would not survive this next year. Well, it, we'll Perhaps. see how it goes. You know, we got the whole year ahead of us. But I don't drink as much alcohol anymore. Um, I don't drink as much coffee. I don't smoke cigarettes. I, I, I don't smoke anything. And I've t- completely changed from the time you met me. I've, I've turned, I, I started to meditate. I'm doing yoga. I lost some weight. How much, I'm a vegetarian. How much of that is because you live in California now? I started doing all that before I moved there. Look at you with your segues. You're just segway central over here. <laughs> it's kind of... <laughs> That's what this podcast should be called. Segway Central. 
Yes, I live in California, Mike. Other than the hair, what I think is most different about you is you're more confident around strangers than you were when I met you. You know why? It's and because you're I surround myself with people who I like to be with. That's probably it. I think your songwriting is stronger than when I first met you. Oh, absolutely. And I wasn't even writing songs at that point. You're definitely a better guitar player than you were when I met you. Like, well, I don't know about that. I mean, <laughs> you play a better guitar than I do. That Everybody does. Now, I, I think artistically, you're like a completely different person. I can't really speak to the rest of you because we didn't, never lived together, so... It's it's amazing what happens when you surround yourself with people you want to be around. Because I don't know if you... I'm, I'm assuming you've had this experience before, but I don't want to assume. But, you know, like, I lived with this person, and I made a lot of art and movies and music with him but I you know like I said earlier I didn't go anywhere I was very isolated and it wasn't until I got away and all these you know rifts in our friendship came about that I discovered who I really wanted to be and what I wanted to do for myself and not have someone. And some people would, would disagree with this, but I kind of wrote on uh, some coattails of mine, even though there wasn't much of anything but rags to be stepping on at that point. But I, since then, you know, I've, I know I'm being very vague here. It's because I don't want to give people like him the spotlight, the time of day. And that's fair. You'll notice that I have not said this person's name yet, even though I know it, because I know, that's, I know how you feel about it. And I'm completely over it. Like, but that doesn't mean it still can't bother me sometimes. Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe that means I'm not over it. I think it means you're not over it, but you know what? You're a human. Things that hurt us, things that hurt us, we don't necessarily get over. We just learn how to deal with it. But basically, uh, my best friend. You don't have to tell the story. I know, I know, but I want to give some context because it was too vague. Okay. But basically, my best friend of, of however many years we, we went to college together um, ended up with uh, my ex girlfriend and. We all lived together. It was a weird situation, and I moved out, and they eventually got married, and, you know, I went on to do cooler things. They went back to live near their hometown, you know, and which is totally fine to be wherever you want to be. It's a very Midwest thing to do, also. Very much so, and, I, you know, they chose the path of um, stability, Whereas I chose the path of chaotic energy and, you know, I don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. And, you know, I'd rather every day be different than, than be, have a, a safety net, you know, because it makes, I, I, when I get to the end of my life, I want to be able to say that I did some interesting things. And since that time, when I moved out of that house, I've done some interesting things. And that's a start. Now it's only up from here. Is that a good way to... Is that... That's really professional sounding. Okay. Hey, did you do anything interesting today? I don't know. Not really. Huh. Come what? on, Segway Central. What? Help me out. What did you do today? Well, I shot a video for you. A video. What, what kind of video was this? Ugh. It was a music video for uh, your new single, Hold the Wick. Yeah. You could be my Aramis uh, Productions. What is it? Is it Productions? You could be my Aramis Music LLC is the name of my uh, Okay, that's not company. my production company, but that's, just, that's yours. Yeah. Do you have a production company yet? 
I don't. I'm I'm working on it because I am going to be doing a documentary here soon and going to uh need the production company. Yeah. So you live in San you used to live here. Now you live in San Diego. You flew home to visit family and friends for like three weeks. Yeah. And while you're here, you've shot two music videos now. This says something that you're in so demand that you're so much in demand. It says something about your skill set. Or my price. <laughs> <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> Ranges from a lunch up until whatever. Uh yeah, I don't know. But is that because I am your friend and John DeBuck is my friend? Or is that because you, both of you see my stuff as being able to push your art? I think you're talented, and that's why I hired you to shoot the video. Thank we you. get along, but if you were terrible at shooting videos, I would not ask you to make me a video. That's fair. Can't speak for DeBuck. I really apologize about this puff coat. I hope it's not coming up on the, uh, the mic here, but it is pretty cold in here. I do have to say, you. I'm in a t-shirt. You might want to bring a fireplace up here or something. There is a heater. It's just not on. Okay. Don't Hold worry up. about it. No, it is on. That's ridiculous. And you're, on. This is your guest bedroom. How do you treat your guests like this? Hey, oh, don't worry about it's it. It's been I was a while joking. since we I had was a guest. Joking. My, I know you were joking. My fingers ready. aren't frozen. I'm yet. gonna turn the heat off. <laughs> you're turning it off. Wow. He wants to make me colder. You're wearing a puffy jacket. You'll be fine. Okay, that's true. But yes, um, I like, I don't know. I, I'm glad you uh, asked me to do this video. I, I've done a few videos for you, but they've been different. We, I, we, I've never shot anything for you. Right. Just comp compiled some stuff. Describe the videos that you have done for me so far. Basically. Let, let's go in order. The first one you did was Promise. Promise. Um, I like putting together public domain footage. Um, I'm a big fan of retro black and white film stuff that I can use for free. Um, and also commercials. I'm a big, I collect VHS tapes, right? And I'm the guy, and I know this is a tangent, but I'm the guy that will rather watch a VHS of something than get a 4K restoration Blu-ray. I might not be interested in the movie at all when I see the Blu-ray version of it, but if it's on tape and there's the grainy look to it, the sounds terrible, for some reason, that appeals to me way more. So... I put together <laughs> some, some, what I guess I'm saying is bad looking footage, but just compiled. I, I love uh, putting together rhythm, uh, uh, videos to a rhythm, and music videos are a great way to do that. And that, that's what I did for you. And then the second one was more of a Ken Burns type finding. Um, some photos and doing that, that Ken Burns effect. That was for your anthem. And for I should be clear, anthem. that's what I, I don't generally have ideas, but that's an idea that I wanted. And I communicated that to you and you yeah. executed it. And, 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 and that's not a video that I would have normally done, but I'm all about having new experiences and trying things out. And yeah. And, and this new one we shot for Hold the Wick. I've been watching a lot of art movies, art films, and I wanted to try something out for you, but also be a benefit to me, because I like to, for both of us to learn something, to enhance what you're doing, and for me to do something else too. So I've been watching some Ingmar Bergman films, and I took, um, you know, Hour of the Wolf was a big influence on on what we did today and i am nowhere near what he was doing in 1968 but i tried and it's hard 
I, you know, I came to this with a little bit of a plan. And there's always stuff I see that's interesting, and I'll get get some other little um, shots. But for the most part, I am not a planner, and that's, I think, where, where you and I differ. That is where we differ. So I, I did a little half and half, though, because I channeled my inner Mike Bankhead for it. And, yeah, and I, there are benefits to both. I think being open in either scenario is good, but also being um, set on what has to happen. My anxiety does not lend itself to a lot of spontaneity. And I, I, I understand that. How are you with... Um, you don't drink a ton of coffee. No, I don't even drink coffee every day. I do drink it if I've... And I'm just particularly tired or particularly didn't sleep well and I need the caffeine push. There was a time when I used to drink it a lot and it contributed to me having anxiety attacks, panic attacks, and being shaky. So I had a doctor once who told me to stop drinking it and I gave it up for like a year. And then um, I started again, but definitely not every day. I, I, had, found, I had two cups a day though. Yeah. I, I found the taste is much better than the effect for me. I love the taste. I, I even love the coffee breath. I know some people think that's disgusting. It but. is disgusting. I like the taste of good coffee. I like the taste of bad coffee, too, which is dumb. Uh, my like wife, Waffle House kind of coffee? I love Waffle House coffee. It's but great, you know, right? And I learned this from David Payne. They're not using the most quality ingredients, but they are grinding those beans fresh every time. And that's why... He used to work it? No, he's just a coffee expert. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so... The, my, but, you know, Misty is a coffee snob, and so she's really only after a sustainably sourced, uh, you know, beans and grind them on. You know, she's once her coffee bespoke, I'll drink bad coffee. I'm more likely to drink it if I have some food with it. Like the bitterness of coffee and the sweetness of those brownies I brought this morning, mm-hmm. perfect contrast. Uh, absolutely. What, um, are you doing a webcam right now? Do you see that red light? Yeah. That means it's off. The green light means it's on. Nah, that's over see, here. that's the opposite of what I'm used to. Well, I, I don't know how to turn it on when it's not. Okay, I just want to make sure because no, I no, the webcam. Sound a release and here. if the webcam was running, it would just be shooting the wall because neither of us are sitting where it's pointing. So well, maybe it's a wide angle. I don't it's know. It's not that wide. Okay. Well, the point I was trying to make here, or what I was getting to, is, um, and you, you kind of answered it, the the anxiety with the coffee. Where, um, when did you? I'm gonna turn the tables here. When did you first discover that anxiety was a problem for you? You know, I wrote a blog post about it, and I'll link that in the show notes instead of talking about it. Well, you gonna I'm going to make you too? read. you going to... What? Well, I want to hear it from your perspective. I don't, I don't want the edit of... Um, uh, I'm much more eloquent here. when I write it. Hmm? I'm much more eloquent when I'm writing. Well, we don't have to be eloquent here. That's the point of talking like this. Right? All right, I'm going to make a long story short, but... Okay. Uh, it's something that was probably with me my entire life, but I've only recently figured that out now that I'm older and know the symptoms and have done more reading on it. But I, after a work trip in 2014, I came home. I had not adjusted to the time zone. I was jet lagged. I was overworking myself, pushing myself too hard, drinking a ton of coffee. And then one day I thought I was going to die. I thought I was having a heart attack and we called 911. I went in the ambulance and, it was a panic attack. And since I did not know, I'd never had one before. I was, I didn't know that wasn't a heart attack, right? And then since then, I started having them regularly. Um, I don't have panic attacks quite as often anymore, but at least now I recognize what it is. But that's when I was, you could say, officially diagnosed. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm both anxious and depressed. It's like a two for one. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm that too. My, my peaks and valleys aren't as sharp anymore. Um, and, and I'm thankful for that. And, you know, I'm, you know, I, it's, I know what you, you are going through and have gone through. And I noticed when I was a kid, looking back now as what I was doing as a kid, little, little things like me not wanting to win bingo. So I didn't have to yell bingo in front of a crowd of people. Mm. It makes sense now. Yeah. 
but I just didn't know why, like, I would be winning something. Why would that not be a joyous thing? I don't know. But now I do. Anyway. We, we've gone from talking about art to psychoanalyzing ourselves. Really, if you pay attention to my songs, I, it comes up in my songwriting, of course, sometimes more explicitly than others. Yeah, but it's there, and my art is kind of one of the ways I deal with it. Well, and doing this. And doing, well, this is a new outlet for me. You know, I've just started. But yeah, having conversations. In fact, my doctor said recently that I'm supposed to have a meaningful conversation every day with someone who is not my wife. Well, this is a great way to do it. This counts. In fact, I think this conversation is going to be so long, I wonder if it'll count for tomorrow, too. Like, you are definitely going to set the record for my longest the guest with the longest podcast episode. Hey, we're just getting started, man. I know. We didn't even finish talking about the video, which is the reason I had you on here. I mean, I would have had you on here anyway, mm. but that's today's topic. Yeah. Well, uh, one more thing about what you were saying. Yeah, go ahead. You're, you're the, exper- of the two of us, you're the one with, that has podcast hosting experience. Yeah, well, I only did 30 of them. Um, Doing stuff like this all the time will help numb your uh, your problems with with uh, talking. Just doing doing something you, that is causing you the anxiety and doing it over and over and over it will make it less meaningful in a way. Oh well, talking is not what makes me anxious. I don't have a problem talking. But it but doing this right now, mm-hmm. there is so less of a chance. For us to both be um, dragged, dragged, drug, dragged, drugged. I think dragged, dragged into a hole, a pit of of whatever of just because both of us are distracting each other. I think that's the when I'm most dangerous to myself is when at night when I'm supposed to sleep and I can't turn my brain off. I understand and that like completely. Fourteen different things. I know it might sound weird to people, but I swear to you, I ruminate on multiple things at the same time, yeah. and I just can't. That's what makes it hard for me to sleep, but it's just, just yeah. too much. No, I completely, I mean, I'm three hours ahead right now. Rachel goes to bed, and I'm up a little longer. Like, what am I going to do? Like, yeah. the, dark, the, the darkness sets in, you know, um, oh, in more, in more ways than friend. one. <laughs> exactly. No, but like, did you get that cleared? By the way, were you allowed to say that? You know what? I'm not. We're gonna have to take that out. No, don't take it out. Um, (laughs) did I get that cleared? That's exactly the correct language. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I. You're right. Having this conversation, like we're actively involved, yeah, mentally participating. Are there other things I'm thinking about? Yes, but I'm thinking more about not sounding like an idiot when I'm trying to talk to you. Well, so. and you're thinking about what's coming next, and that's what makes you segue Stan. I changed it up. Did you notice that? <laughs> I did. <laughs> now, um, but let me just say again, I am excited for you to be doing this because I discovered when I had the microphone in front of me and I was talking to people that I could get things out of people that I wouldn't normally... If I didn't have a microphone in front of me, it's almost as if why like it's that? a buffer. Explain why that is. It's a buffer. Like, it's the same reason why I can't do stand-up comedy. I'm a, I, I'm a comedy writer. You know, I've, I've written comedy, and that's what I really want to do. Um, music is great. I love mu- music, m- making videos. But I've found, when I have a guitar in front of me, or a microphone, w- w- paired with a microphone, I should say, not a microphone alone. I feel there's a buffer between me and the audience. But sitting down like this, there's a bu- buffer between me and you. And it feels like it's almost a different version of me that's a- able to get things out of people or, or talk in a way. Because, like, this is a. What we're doing right here is a great conversation. I think. We'll let the listeners decide. You're like, um, 
a sidekick on a talk show. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, the writers have gone on strike. I'm just like talking into the camera and <laughs> every now and then you interject. No, it's, um, it sh- it's the other way around. This is your podcast, man. No, but this podcast is mostly, this episode is about promoting my video, but I also want to promote you and your art. And we're going to link to all your stuff in the show notes so that Thank people you. can, Thank you. you know, you didn't even say that you put out vinyl for your first record and that you need to sell them so that they're not laying around your house anymore. Well, you already did. So who, who well, I just to said say it just again? then, but you didn't say that previously. <laughs> you said it. Well, I, I thank you for putting that plug in there. But my point is, I'm excited to see where you take this and I'm excited to see what you get out of people. And as you do it more, you will learn to be more comfortable with asking those scarier questions. And yeah, it'll be an experience for everyone, including yourself and most importantly yourself. So far, it's been 90% musicians. Well, I mean, it'll get to a point where... You... I'm fine with that, by the way. I'm a, I tend to relate to musicians better. I, I will certainly have more people on as we go that are not musicians. Yeah. And I will certainly have musicians on and we'll have a conversation that has nothing to do with music. When the Those great, things are coming. And the great thing is you're not sticking locally. You're, you're going everywhere. You're going I to am. L.A., Canada. Is what I said. My Canada. first, my first episode is with a Canadian. Yeah, yeah, was with a Canadian. That one's already out. Yeah, because there we're you putting go. this out in March, there right? Future past talking. Uh huh. I love how that works. But did you say Canada? I accidentally. Okay. Canada is what the real thing is. Canadians. Brandon did not mean to insult your home and native land. Well, here's the thing. I, I am from Northwest Ohio, and I have a bit of what you would call an accent. Well, everyone has an accent, whether they want to think they do Listen, or not. I don't need semantics here. Um, is that semantics? But I have a mixture of what is called the Great Lakes accent, which is, is like an offshoot. Cleveland, of, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Detroit. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you say that one? I, I didn't, know. but I was going to... On the Chicago ones, I feel like they sound a little differently than Detroiters and Clevelanders. Yeah. But definitely that northern Rust Belt accent is different than the one that I have because I'm from a little bit... Just a teeny bit farther south. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I just don't know where I got that. My parents aren't that way. They have their own manner of speaking, but... I don't know. What were we saying? I don't know where you were going with that. We were talking about Canada. Oh, we were talking about your guests. Oh, my, yeah, you, you were saying uh, where your guests are spanning from. Yeah, the first guest is Liam, and Liam is from Toronto and has recently moved to Vancouver. Well, you can only do so much with a local crowd, and yeah. it, it serves the local crowd, but when you get people from all those different places, you, you start to form a spider web, and they, they web out from those places, and I know that's exactly what you're doing. I'm... You're not fooling me, Mike Bankhead. Um, <laughs> but those, and that's the beautiful thing. People love to talk about themselves, as we know. There's nothing wrong with that. No, absolutely not. But having them talk about themselves willingly, they have fans themselves. And their fans will get in there. And maybe there's even a guest somewhere in the fan group there. And you'll get them too. Um, we're going very meta with this whole podcast. We're talking about the podcast as a marketing tool. As a marketing tool. Well, I don't like marketing, but me neither. So that wasn't my original intention. Not gonna lie, it's no yeah. longer my intention. I mean, it's part of my intention. But I'll tell you this: having done ten-ish episodes now, mm-hmm. one thing I have learned is that when people If you give a person the opportunity to talk about something they are passionate about, that's fascinating. Like, I never realized how interesting it is to listen to somebody talk about something they're really into. Assuming it's something that I'm also into. For instance, what is something I'm not into at all? The Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. If I had, this is an inside joke for some musician pals of mine, but... Not my thing. If I were to have a musician on this podcast 
and they wanted to talk about the Rolling Stones for an hour. I would not enjoy that. But you'd still do it. Oh, probably not. But not, See, that's where you need to... You're to, saying I, I need to get over that's what you're saying. And you will. And that's what will make you grow. Talking about things you're not interested in, that was, that was something I was going to mention about your intro. You're talking about having people on who have similar interests. Yeah. You should have people on who have dissimilar interests. That's an interesting thought. I, w- I was going to finish that by saying I have an episode scheduled where we're going to discuss Fountains of Wayne. Mm, yeah. I love Fountains of Wayne. I could listen to someone pontificate on Fountains of Wayne for four hours. Sure. Yeah. I don't think I'd want to listen to someone talk about the Rolling Stones for an hour. I think you would get something out of it. Well, I feel like you're challenging me to have someone you on have to talk to about the Rolling Stones. You have to boil it down to what it is. You're talking about music at the end of the day. This is true. And I think you will get something out of it that you, not saying you're not open to it, but I think there is more of a catalog out there with the Beatles as well that you would enjoy. I See, got nothing you do against, that little thing with I your I got eye. nothing against the Beatles. You have, you have what against the Beatles? Nothing against the Beatles. Oh, you don't? Is that a wink that you just... No, said? I mean, I don't, I'm not as familiar you with their catalog winking. as many people. So I'm not strange. winking, it's just a, it's a tick. <laughs> I'm being I'm twitchy because I'm anxious. You don't notice how I never stop moving. You weren't actually winking. I was making a joke because no one can see you. See, that's the thing with this podcast. I mean, I could, it could have been a video podcast, but it's not. Nah, don't do that. I'm too ugly for video. That's why podcasts I do this are not for looking at. They're for listening to. There are podcasts that are on YouTube, and you can look. And at that's them. my point. I've been on one. You should listen to podcasts, not watch them. Oh, I mean, I've been on one. That's on YouTube. Yeah, your shirt's off. Is it? <laughs> Not right now. On the podcast. It, I didn't have my shirt off on that well, podcast. Well, yes, you did. I did not. Absolutely you did. I saw your naked body. Your torso. Not I think the you're confused. You. Was a guy that... No, no, I'm not. The guy that takes his shirt off for his show. Oh, that wasn't a podcast. What was that it? That was an Instagram show thing. Well, see, that's the problem. There's a line <laughs> that needs to be drawn. Podcast or podcast, that, that show is, is called, a video blog. First of all, that, that show was called Shirtless and in Long John's at a Piano. Not only was that the show's title, that was the shtick. And the gentleman who did that show was named Jeb Caldwell, and he has since discontinued it. And oh, really? Yeah, I told him, I, I reached out to him and said he needs to bring that back because it was fascinating. It wasn't even that long ago. I mean, I was on that during the pandemic. I mean, hold up. I say that like it's over. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be listening to this in 2027, and the pandemic will still be in progress. I did that show in, I think, spring 2020. Okay. That sounds about right. That was not a podcast. And I was topless for that because the show is literally called Shirtless and in Long... I did not wear Long John's because I don't own any Long John's, Mm. but Shirtless and Long John's at a piano. Jeb is going to be like, why in the world are you talking about that on your podcast? I'm, Jeb's going to have to be a guest someday. But you won't know if he's got a shirt off because podcasts are not video. I've been doing a lot of the interviews via Zoom, so I would know. <laughs> it's just that nobody listening would know. Right. What's your next move here? you got the podcast going. you got got another album you're working on. A couple albums. Three albums, right? Hold up. Who's the one interviewing who here? I'm going there's, back to my old ways. There's no interview. We're just having a conversation. Yeah. You want to know what my next plan is musically? What's, what's the next thing you're putting out? Because you have three projects in the works. The next thing four. I'm putting out is Hold the Wick, which is out March 15th. Right. Then that's what we're talking here. But you have like full length stuff. Because you got the thing with Ruth. I got the thing with Ruth that's in progress. And there's no way that's getting done until... We won't be finished with it until 2023 at the earliest. We might get a single or two out in 2022. That project is called We Met in Paris. It's called that because it's true. Mm -hmm. Ruth is my co-writer. She lives in Ipswich, which is on the east coast of England. Okay. In the United Kingdom. And then you have the, what what would you call it earlier? Affectionately, the FUBU project. Yes. FUBU for us by us. Yes. That project is I've been writing a lot during the pandemic. I have a lot of songs that are specifically about experiences unique to African-Americans, to black people. Instead of 
like anecdote from my previous record. Mm. Very, the experiences told in the anecdote are very unique to black people in the United States. I have a few songs that touch on similar topics. Instead of spreading them across multiple albums, I decided to put them all on one EP. And artistically, the aesthetic is that all personnel for that record are African American. They're going to be black. And by all personnel, I mean engineer, mixer, mastering person, all musicians, videographer, photographer, everybody on the project, African American. Yeah. Which has given me the opportunity to work with people I've not worked with before. That is in progress. Will probably not be out until fall at the earliest. Depends on a lot of factors. You, you've made records. You know sometimes it doesn't come out when you want it to because some things take longer. And then someday I do want to do a third full-length record, but I don't even foresee even starting on that until late 2022, early 2023. But I write so much music, and obviously not all of it is something that I'm comfortable sharing with people. As we discussed earlier, there's a difference between making art for you and the second you put a price tag on it and ask someone to buy it, it's a product, right? So if I'm going to ask someone to spend money on my art, it needs to be good enough that I feel like it's worthy of somebody spending money on. And honestly, not all the songs I write are that good, right? So the ones that aren't good, nobody's going to hear those. But I write a lot. And I'm going to be playing with you on one of those, right? You want me to show you the the spreadsheet where I literally have your name on it for that song? I, I'll show you when, we, when we're I've done. I've seen it before. Oh, yeah, you asked. Before. You uh, you happen to like. You know what? I actually like it that you like some of my songs. It's gratifying. But yeah, you like one of my songs enough that you said you wanted to play on it, and I will honor that request. Yeah, because well, on all your records, for the most part, you get the big, big pups. You know. I mean. As far as our tiny little town of Dayton yeah, is concerned, but, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, Todd Widener is doing some great stuff, and well, Todd Widener's solo stuff is outstanding, and I have a feeling that once his stuff blows up, his price tag is going to go up. You think so? Even for a local guy? No, he's not a local guy anymore. No, I'm saying, but but you're eventually not going to be a local guy, and you know that. I'm you not, know that, right? In your heart, that's not true. Here's you want it to be that way. Honestly. What I want is for someone to hand me a paycheck for writing songs. Yeah. And it, I would limit it at that. And it's I happened have, before, though. It's uh, happened already. It has, but I'm talking about the kind of paycheck that enables me to not do another job. I'm not looking for fame because fame is you lose your privacy and it's just too much to deal with. I, You know who I'd want to be is Dan Wilson. Are you familiar with Dan Wilson? Um, Refresh me. Dan Wilson is the songwriter from Semisonic, who is very famous for that song, Closing Time. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Every hey, 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 you begin- got to clear. Got to clear. It's not cleared. Um, even people that know that song, if they're not a music nerd, you don't know that Dan Wilson wrote it. Mm-hmm. These days, Dan Wilson writes for people like John Legend and Adele. He wrote a, like two or three songs on one of Adele's, like her second or third record. He writes songs for other artists and makes a nice living at that. And unless you're a music nerd like us, you don't even know his name. Mm. That sounds like a pretty good way to make a living. Absolutely. Why are we talking about this? Weren't we supposed to talk about your approach to shooting Hold the Wick today? Tangential. Yeah. Here's the thing. I might edit that entire conversation out. No. Don't, why would you do that? Listen, you can have a I'm not here pocket. to talk about me. I'm here to talk about you. I don't care. I'm saying you have this material. Why not use it? If people don't listen to I mean, they've listened to any of it. And, you know, the point is to get the listens, right? You really think there are people still listening to this at the... Come on, don't do that shtick with the podcast. Everybody does 53 this. 53 minute mark? That's what do pod- people do that? That's what my podcast was all about. No one's listening to this at this point. That's, what, that's our whole thing. That was our whole thing. And then we grew up. Well, at least one of us did. And it wasn't the other guy. Well, if you want to go meta, we, we both talked about how much we enjoyed the Gem City podcast. Personally, I was introduced to many Dayton musicians that I had not heard of prior to them getting interviewed by Izzy Rock on the Jam City podcast. Yeah. Uh, Jam City. Got to pronounce it right. Jim. 
Yeah, he no, says a jam. gym. He says a gym. In the later episodes, he didn't. He yeah, fixed because it. we, <laughs> I pointed it out. It was one of the things. Yeah. Jim is James. Jem is the stone that Dayton is. And I'm a fencer, by the way. You're a fencer? Do you ever, you never asked you that question? You're a fisher or a fencer? No. Okay, that's a, never mind. Let's go move on. Um, but yeah, that's, that's. But, and also, yeah. I was going to say, not only did I meet, virtually meet musicians on that podcast but musicians that already knew would go on the podcast like the tradition was in Dayton if you put out a new record you interview with Izzy Rock on the podcast so even musicians I knew personally it was enjoyable to hear the stories behind their songs to hear them talk about what they do and I think that was a useful service to the community not just the music episodes but because they had they covered other topics and through no fault of their own they lost everything. That podcast is gone. Yeah. And I think that we have space in our community here in Dayton for a podcast that talks to local musicians. And so perhaps I can provide that service. Yeah. Well, and you're like we said, you're not just local. No. You're everywhere. But I do want to talk to local people. Of course. I live here. Yeah, you should get Izzy on the show. You ever think about that? He's already scheduled. Really? He's coming in next week. Well, he's not coming in. We're going to do it via Zoom, but I'm talking to him next week. Absolutely. Uh, he's astounding. really good at it. He did it for a long time. And as you know, labor of love. Didn't get paid for it. Yeah. Worked really hard. Uh, really improved his craft. We started doing ads, and we said, is this the way to do it? I let, we, we talked to him. And he told us exactly that. Did he say no? Um, because I think if you run an ad and that paid for the cost of doing the podcast, that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you want to get better gear. Well, we did, it did not pay for the cost, um, because it has to go with small podcasts, like what, what we had and what I have and what you have, you have to have your listeners go out and actually make a purchase because on your behalf, essentially like use the offer code. Oh, that's not happening. Exactly. Um, but if with my bigger listeners podcasts, buy anything, I want them to buy my records. With bigger podcasts, it's different because, you know, there is a listener fan base. Uh, essentially what you need to do, grow the fan base organically. And at that point, if you decide that you need to get paid for it and to do it, um, do the ads. And, and you know, uh, it's what you call selling out. But, you know, the problem is... Sometimes you need to sell out to make a little coin. Well, it's not selling out if you need that money to improve your podcasting experience, right? You're looking at the gear I have. I don't have the typical podcaster yeah. gear set up, and I'm not about to spend money on it unless someone were to hand me that money. Yeah. And then I would gladly spend it on better gear. Yeah. Right? Well, but do your research. You know how to do that. I do. I don't really know how to do much, but research is one of the things I can do. <laughs> well, what are we doing here? What are we? We're segue uh, Shelly. That's a different one. Well, we kind of, yeah, you said Stan last time. We were talking about the music video that you were shooting for me today, and we did kind of drift off course. Why don't we just let it speak for itself? I think that's what needs to happen, because it's not even made yet is the problem. Well, we shot, shot it. We shot it, some of it. And explain I, I, to people who may not know how, what happens after you shoot. Maybe they don't know how music videos are made. Well, I just, I, I up, you know, put your, your wave file in a... Um, Video editor, a nonlinear editor, because we're not working with film anymore. We can just move stuff around. Take your clips, and uh, it's like a puzzle, man. Like you just you put it in, and if it doesn't work, you shoot something else to replace what you, what you didn't like, and go from there. I think what we shot today, though, was pretty great. By and, we, you mean you? I didn't shoot anything. Well, Rachel Rosen um, also helped. Um, assist, and she, well, that's what assistant director means. I don't know what her title is. I don't even know what my title is. Director. Okay. Editor. Okay. Well, you're the spreadsheet guy. You're the guy with the titles. I don't know anything. I'm. I consider. I am a better video editor than I am a shooter, and but by doing this today. No, oh, you shot today and directed, and you will edit in the future. Well, and that's the point. To do it, I need to do it. And to get better, you just have to suck first. 
We all know that. That's the uh, whole 10,000 hour thing, right? Put in the work. Yeah, I don't know that. Still not. Uh, I won't get into that. No, Are you not either. comfortable over there? No, this is the most uncomfortable. I told you you could take the pillows off the chair. I have bad upper back problems, okay? I'm I'm on, we're we're probably nearing the end the way your tone is, you know, about me talking so much, but I have no honestly, I would like you to talk more. You had me talk about myself for like 5 minutes and there there's no reason I talked for that. quite a bit here and I probably said some things that I will regret, but I don't want you to take it out because that wouldn't be the real me. Now would it? <laughs> you know what? You should be proud of me, though. I did not say one curse word. I didn't even tell you not to curse. You just, I, you, I just, just know, I, you just knew better. I assumed. Well, had you cursed, I would have edited it out. It would be I'm edited sure. out. No, no one what, would ever know. What uh, what words are you letting in here? I think I might edit out the word segue every time you said it. <laughs> Why? That's a joke. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, here, here's a question for you. Because you're a bass player, and, and you, when you play shows solo, you are... You're just a bass player, right? Usually. And that's not a typical thing. Like, like I've uh, never seen anyone do it. Thundercat, right? I mean, I've never been to one of their shows. I'm just saying... <clears throat> Victor Wooden a, could probably do it, but I don't think he sings. It's a thing. It's a it's a it's a thing that people do. But I'm surprised. And you, you brought out the piano. Like that wasn't a thing you did in the beginning. No, I'm not good enough at piano to actually play piano in public. But sometimes well, you I do. I'm terrible at it. But sometimes I push myself and do it. Yeah, and that's the that's the thing, right? To, to push yourself to do something you're uncomfortable with until it becomes comfortable. Correct? I don't think I'll be playing piano in public often enough for me to ever be comfortable Ten with it. Ten years from now, you will be able to use that sustain pedal I gave you. <laughs> Ten years from now, I might have been dead for five years already. Well, let's hope that's not the case. You, ha- you had a point here somewhere. Yes, the point was... What's stopping you from... I know you say you give me the excuse your hands are too big. And that's why you play bass. Why not learn acoustic? I'd rather write songs than spend the amount of time it takes to learn how to play a guitar. But don't you think it would open up a whole new way of writing songs? Because, uh, and you know this as well as I do, I think... you write different songs on a bass, and I know you don't do that typically. You do it on a piano. But if you were to write some songs on a bass, I... you would make different songs than you would on a piano. I do sometimes. You know what? I wrote one on a bass a couple of weeks ago. I should. When we're done, I'll play it for you. Okay. See? And, and it was probably different, right? Uh, I could have written that on a piano. But just imagine what you would do if you used a different instrument. But why guitar? Compose. Everybody does that. I think what makes my songwriting no, no, no. stand out is that I don't play guitar. And I approach songwriting differently than guitarists do. In Possibly. fact, I've had guitarists tell me that when they come to the studio and they're confused at what I tell them I want them to do. But my point is not the studio. My point is the... Sh- the composition. No, well, not even that. Playing a show is much, much easier. Because if you have an acoustic guitar. Because there what do you There are a need? thousand people that play a show with an acoustic I understand. guitar. But don't you think it's a valuable asset to have? I think I enjoy playing shows on bass. Okay. And that's fine. And if I need the sound of a guitar, I'll go find a guitarist to play with me. But then you got to pay that person. I should, as a decent human being, pay that person, yes. Yeah. You going to get Alan on this show? Do you think Alan has a lot to say? I don't have a lot to say about this. So I can edit this part out. You can edit this part out. (laughs) Well, you know, I just think it would be a... I don't know. Never mind. So, Brandon, I could approach you and say, you play a lot of shows on guitar. Why don't you learn bass and play some shows on bass? No, that's different. Why is it different? Brandon, why don't you learn accordion? I've written and play songs some, on bass. Why don't you learn accordion and play some shows? Play some shows on accordion. I would love to re- learn the accordion. I'm it's learning just because pia- you like I'm learning Wardell. to be a better p- piano player. Um, and I and I do that by 
playing piano. And I wouldn't have done that if I didn't have a piano. You know, and I've written different songs than I did on um, an acoustic because there's only so much that I feel I can do on an acoustic guitar. But when I, when I pluck the keys here, and it might be the same chords. So the question is, what could I do on an acoustic that I can't do on a piano? You can go writing to wise. Writing wise, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Diff- rhythms are different. They're easier to to do. You think they're easier? That doesn't mean they're easier. I'm a guitar player. I'm not. Not yet. I'm not. So, Brandon, man of many talents, what's next for you? Well, I'm here until. Well, by the time this comes out, I guess you will be back in San Diego. I will Diego. be back in San Diego. Um, and after that, actually, even before, I will be coming back again in mid February up until mid March, shooting a teaser to a documentary, which might end up being a full documentary if we don't come back. That was so roundabout it hurt my head. What do you mean? So, Brandon, I understand that you were back here in Ohio a few weeks ago shooting a teaser for a documentary. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. But it will have happened by the time this gets released. You have to talk about Perhaps. these things in the present. I know, I'm sorry. What is happening is by the time you hear this, and by the time you get this edited, I will have gone to Michigan to shoot a proto-documentary with Rachel Rosen. Why Michigan, as opposed to, say, Arkansas? The, the, there are five filmmakers who want to make five feature films on an island in Michigan during the winter. That Hasn't limits been you, done That to limits you knowledge. from December to March. Well, winter just started. The solstice was yesterday, right? The so. reason being, the budget is not there yet. Okay. And we're doing a short version of what will end up being a long feature-length documentary. So essentially, there's six movies being made. And we're doing this as a test to see if the L.A. people can withstand the weather. And if we can cut the cost down to uh, the point where we can stay there for five months. Wait, you're bringing native Californians to Michigan in winter? I'm not. I'm but just documenting. Is. I'm documenting the process. Which Did is anyone all explain the po- to these people that it's below 60 degrees every day in Michigan in winter? Like, I've seen pictures of Los, of Los Angeles people, and as soon as it gets to 60, they're whining about it being cold. I know. Not all of them are from L.A., but two, three of them will be. The point is, all of that is better for me, the documentary, documentarian, because the more trials these people have, the more interesting my movie will be. <laughs> that is outstanding. Yes. So, so really, if one of them just drops dead from hypothermia, that's great film. Great film. Great film. Tragedy. I mean, we can go to the hospital, follow them in there. Tragedy amputate, on the human scale. Amputate their stuff. By, like toes and toes. whatnot. You have to be out there for a long time for that to happen, but be good for, the, for my movie. I find that you're much more animated looking at Rachel than looking at me. I know. but the point I don't is, blame you. She's much more pleasant to look at. I like looking at you. Well, like, that's because I don't know why that would be. There's no reason for that. I don't know. But yeah, like I, I'm glad that someone has the faith in me to make a full-length documentary like this. I had only done some sh- small TV work before, which actually led me to do this. So let me make sure I understand. Someone saw some of your past work, and this is what led to your gig? Uh, uh, word of mouth. That's a good thing. Yes. Uh, you, your reputation precedes you. What do you call that? Um, we were talking about it earlier. 
Networking. Networking. That's the word. And that's why you're doing this podcast, and that's why everything works it is, in the world the way it does. It is not the reason, but it is, it is, one it of is the a reason. It is the reason why I've gotten all the cool things in my life to happen. Because you're not afraid to talk to people and well, make and establish networking. relationships and generally yeah. be a nice person. Yeah. Like, if you were a jerk, none of this stuff happened for you, right? That's not entirely true. Oh. But I... For me, I, I like to... I, that's not entirely true for other people, is what I was trying to say. For me, I like to think I'm an all right guy. What do you think? I think you're an all right guy. And that's great. I think it's important to be kind to people and to treat people nicely and to build relationships by being a decent person. Hmm. And if you do that, someone is more it's going to be more willing to give you an opportunity if you're if they if you have the same talent as someone else and you have already established a relationship or you were a more kind person than the someone else, you're a good person that's going to get that phone call because of being a decent human being. That's, I'm not saying that's the reason we should all strive to be decent human beings, but it's a very nice side effect. I think if you put out pretty good work and you're a good person, you have a better chance, and I'm just reiterating what you're saying. No, but you're saying it much more clearly than me, so that's good. You're, you're, you have a better chance than the guy that is, I'm trying to find the word that you won't bleep out. A jerk? That's not what I would go with, but yes. And puts out extraordinary work. You're Agreed. better if your personality is good. So let's sum up. Okay. Brandon Barry. You are a writer, a musician, a performer. A Why did editor. you make that face when you said that part? What face? <laughs> keep going. Just keep going. Video editor. Songwriter. That's different than just being a writer. You write prose and songs yeah. and comedy. You do a lot of stuff. How do you decide, like tomorrow, when you want to create something, how do you, de how do you decide which of the 17 things you know how to create? Which one? Which one do you do? How do you decide? That's tough. It really all depends on what I'm into that day, and it's usually dependent on what I was last inspired by. And that's the best way I can put it. My problem being that I do so many things that I'm only good at many, and I'm not great at anything. So, is it important to you to be great at something? I think it's more important for me to be everything that I want to be and not just one thing great. And I I I'm and I'm doing it, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I I struggle with it, but it's I can't I can't do anything else than do what I'm doing now. That kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, take everything I said and yeah, it does kind of make sense. <laughs> that should be the that should be your personal credo. <laughs> I'm Brandon Barry. You know, I kind of make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Wait, like we were saying in the beginning, no. we met on a podcast. Yeah. So it's kind of full circle. Yeah. I I was on your podcast. Now you're on mine. There is some symmetry in the world. There's some poetic justice. Poetic justice. So uh, here's a question. 
for the uh, outro music today, do you mind if uh, I play one of your songs? Sure. Can we talk about what it is later? Or do you want to talk about it now? What are, oh. gonna, what are you going to play? I don't know. What do you want me to play for the people? For someone that is that has hung in there for the length of this podcast, which one of your songs do you want them to hear is the question. I'll give you a new one. That's outstanding. Yeah. Well, Brandon, since we're coming to the end, not of all things, but of this specific thing, thank you for being interesting. Thank you for being nice to me. Thank you for your hard work shooting the video for Hold the Wick today. Thank you for the work you're going to do in the very near future, editing the video for Hold the Wick. And I wish you the best in your upcoming endeavors. And of course, you have a standing invitation to come back on this podcast anytime to talk about whatever it is that we feel like letting people hear us talk about. Thank you, Mike. Uh, It was fun. And uh, I will come back. Awesome. Once again, thanks to Brandon Barry, not only for directing all of those videos, but also for being my podcast guest. Thank you, dear listener, for being here with me. I'd like you to know that Hold the Wick will be available on all streaming platforms this coming Tuesday, March 15th. If you haven't heard it, 
If you chose not to buy it, that's fine. You can listen to it for free anywhere you stream music on March 15th. And the first, the original Hold the Wick video, the one we shot on the day that we uh, recorded this podcast, that video is going up on YouTube also on March 15th. I really want you to watch it. Please watch it. Have a lovely weekend. See you Tuesday. Bye.